this it is, is my sword and shield. I like that. I'm here today in response to the Master's will. And I know that if I'm true, there is nothing that he won't do. You believe it, God. Amen. 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 All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. So we're, uh, we're moving now into, uh, into Jude, and uh, we, we've been properly prepared to, to take on Jude, because uh, uh, Jude is taking us a little bit deeper into this whole issue about <coughs> false teaching, right? Uh, in fact, we're, we're now entering into a phase of uh, that I would call direct confrontation because Jude is a book that uh, instructs us to, to do three things. To fight, to contend, and to do battle. Uh, so having said that, if, if Peter's letter to the church was meant to, to, to really send out a warning, right? You know, Second Peter, we were talking about the fact that he's, he's letting them know that uh, that all of this stuff is coming so that the people who are reading his letter would understand that uh, uh, that all they need in order to uh, to resist what's coming uh, has already been given to them. If that's true with Peter's letter as a warning about false prophets, what is what is Jews' letter then designed to do? Let us know that they are here. Mm. No longer coming. They're here. They're here. <clears throat> and so Jude is saying, as the author titled chapter 10 in our book on page 157, it's time to arm up. Arm up. <laughs> this, time, this is a call to arm because the enemy is already inside the camp. And, and for those ex-military types, you know, around the table, you know, that's a problem. Yeah. And, and in fact, uh, one of the primary strategies of, of an enemy combatant is to figure out a way to get it. An eye and ear inside of your camp. Well, Satan is no different. In, in fact, he, he's probably the, the, the worst the best at doing that. Yes. And so, uh, <clears throat> let's start out by talking about who, who, who is Jude? Who, who is this guy? James. Brother, 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 brother James. Mm. Brother. Okay. Okay. And, 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 and I, I uh, it's particularly interesting as the, the way he introduced himself. Don't you think so? He's a he's a half brother. Well, to Jesus I mean, Christ. Jesus. Oh, brother Jesus Christ. Christ. But but that's not what he emphasized. Okay. He emphasized James, which means that he wasn't taking any uh, special privileges of trying to get you to believe that he was all of that. Uh, he's another uh, Christian. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And there's some schools of thought saying that, you know, he was uh, on the negative side, that he may have been uh, uh, using James because James was head of the church at that time in Jerusalem. Now, you know, people today don't leverage things like that, do they? <laughs> so, so, so that, that's a way the enemy can introduce possibilities in your head. You know, I've got a buddy in London that uh, put forth arguments like that, you know, that uh, you know, nobody's that humble where uh, uh, they're going to uh, uh, deny themselves any kind of uh, opportunity to get the spotlight on them. You know, uh, this guy was, uh, he was leveraging. He wasn't uh, just being humble. But you get the impression that Jude is, was like that. Mm -hmm. This is a person who transitioned from not even believing that Jesus was the Christ. 
In fact, both of his brothers were like that. With his brother. Yeah. Yeah. You know so, which group? Go ahead. It's the Apple Watch, probably. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> it's the uh, thing that we talk about many times that the people that we came up with and around, hung out with mm -hmm. and around, uh, when they know that you have become a Christian, uh, there ain't no way to do Christian. Mm -hmm. I know that boy when. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's like, yeah, you may have known me when, mm -hmm. but you need to know me now. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's what James did. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And we take that view from a global perspective when we talk about prisoners and they talk about the fact that they've converted. Mm -hmm. Well, the reality may be that they really did convert mm -hmm. and yeah. see yeah. the Lord, but we are so programmed to believe that. Um, they only saw Lord, the Lord because they wanted to manipulate their okay. sentence or get out of their okay. situation. Mm -hmm. and, and we run into that inside inside the church body too. Yeah. How, how we can become not discerning but sometimes overly suspicious of mm -hmm. folks based on what's, what you see on the exterior. Okay. And, and, and in the case of, uh, of what's happening with the Jude here is when you introduce yourself and you speak about yourself it says a lot doesn't it? <laughs> you know you you can take a position of uh, let me ask it this way have you ever seen anybody kind of blow themselves out of proportion <laughs> introducing themselves <laughs> you, you, you know something that we do <laughs> You in a meeting. Why you look at me like that? But what we do so many times is introduce ourselves by telling what we do mm -hmm. at work as opposed to who we really are. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But and, and if you exaggerate, you're still telling who you are, right? Well that's true too. <laughs> because uh, the way you introduce yourself reveals an awful lot about you. Yes, it does. Can I? Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, this as an aside, but um, my mom was living and my dad were living. They came to visit and they shared services with okay. us. Okay. And my mother was so impressed by the humility of the people that she met here. Mm -hmm. My mother was just Beverly because it was for our son's wedding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, our daughters, but she had kept playing mm -hmm. and so forth. And uh, in talking to mom, I, I said, uh, I said, well, she's a principal. She said, what? She said, I, she never picked up on any haughtiness, anything that suggested that you were other, someone other than just the person doing a, a service. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought that spoke so highly of who we are. It's, it, I don't know if I mentioned it to you before, but she was so touched by that. Mm -hmm. And she and I told mom about the makeup of this church. I said, let me give you an idea of what the makeup of Antioch is. And I told her about the professionals. And, and, and she was so touched mm. by the fact that she felt so comfortable, so warmly greeted, greeted her. And today they have greeters at, at church, not because of that, but you, you, you pass on something that's very um, sweet yes. spirited yeah. when yeah. you humble yourself. That's right. That's and right. you do it not by <coughs> telling, but by showing that yeah. humility. Yeah. And to for uh, someone who isn't in a, in that setting, who isn't in, among all of the big cars, as you will, if you pull up on the lot and all of this, and you yeah. get a warm, yeah. genuine That's breathing. Beautiful. And Daddy said the same. He said all of those people with all of those basically degrees and so forth. He said, man. That's beautiful. It's because yeah. I'm able to smack kids around when I wasn't doing weddings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and that's, uh, that, that, that speaks to how we ought to be if we are functioning as an instrument of Christ. You don't need to announce yourself by title. Yeah. Exactly. You know, in other words, I'm not, you know, and, and I applaud all of us who have degrees and, mm -hmm. be, and advanced sure. degrees and so forth. But I don't need to be introduced that way. Yeah, yeah, I prefer yeah. to be in, introduced simply as Zelda. Yeah. And I said, get to know me, and then you can ascribe right. what you will right. Right. to who I am. And, and, and that, that's important in trying to accomplish, as an example, what Jude was trying to get done. Mm -hmm. 
you know, because as we said, he, he's now trying to instruct folks, it's time to pick up the arms because the yes. enemy is in the camp. Yes. Yes. And, and so he comes at them uh, with all of the opportunities to, to take the mantle, you know, to, I'm the half-brother of Jesus, I'm the brother of James who's in charge of the church in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But somebody read uh, Jude 1a. Jude, a slave of Jesus Christ and brother of James. Right there. <laughs> what did he put first? A slave of Jesus Christ. He's a servant. He's a servant. Right? Yes. Uh, that, that's a big deal, isn't yes, it? Yes, mm -hmm. How many of us would, in, in introducing ourselves as a, as a worker for the Lord, would start out that way? I mean that that's a that's an important statement to make it. And and you, you, you get the impression that you didn't care who was reading this. <laughs> he wanted you to know that uh, my name is and what does his name mean? Praise. 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 Right? Praise. So he starts out with the uh, Jew. <laughs> And, and there's no mistake about who I praise because the next thing I say to you is I'm a servant yes. of Jesus Christ. That's heavy, isn't it? I mean, in, in, in uh, six words, he's, he's laid a foundation. I praise because that's what he named me. And I praise the one who gave it to me. That's pretty wonderful. Mm -hmm. What does uh, uh, I, I was reading that uh, in the Greek, this whole word uh, being a slave, a servant of Jesus Christ, meant that he was a bond servant. He was a slave. That that's that has a whole different texture to it. That mm -hmm. from being a servant to being a slave. Because the servant suggested, you know, if you get up late this morning, you can call, you know, you can call and say, look, I'm running late. <laughs> but a slave, you get there early because you don't want to disappoint the master. And he humbles himself yes. when he gets there. Yeah. Because he's just ready to do what the Lord wants him to do. Yeah. yeah. And I'm all bought in. Mm -hmm. yes. Great Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, that's exactly it. Definition of a bond service is one who surrenders wholly to another's will and thus is devoted to another without regard for his own interests. They have no will of their own, no business of their own, no time of their own, and are acting for the master while being totally dependent on him and obedient to him. You know what was wonderful in all of that? The words totally and holy. Yeah. So just, there is nothing great. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's totally and holy. No, no wiggle room at all. No. Yeah, I'm, I'm fully committed. Mm -hmm. and, and Jude isn't just the only one who present themselves as being bond servants, as being slaves. Paul did it. You go to Romans 1 1. Timothy did it. Philippians 1 1. James did it. James 1 1. I mean, these are the folks who were sold out. And, and before they begin the process of, of even talking to you about what it is God has put on their heart, they're letting you know up front that, you know, my, my, all of my activities. All of my time, will, dedication, and all is, is as a servant, slave unto Christ. Peter did it. Second Peter 1.1. 1, 1. We just covered that. I thought about uh, 
we always talk about, well, we have free will, an opportunity to make our own decisions. Mm -hmm. But based on your definition, the definition of a bond servant, there was no will. And so for me, that translated immediately into um, you're about anything that the Lord has you to do. Yeah. You don't make those decisions. Right. It's not an option. It's to direct it specifically at what he expects of you yeah. and nothing less. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So Jews said, you know, I'm a servant. Right? First he said, I'm, I came to, I'm named to praise him, a servant. The next thing he did, he says, I'm, I'm content. I'm content with where I am. Because he, he identified himself as being a second banana, right? Because <laughs> he said, I'm also the brother of this other important guy. <laughs> I mean, that, that's really putting himself uh, at the bottom of the wrong. Yes. I'm just like everybody else. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's tough for us today. Isn't it? I mean, do you, do you wrestle with that in situations where your position, your, your expertise causes you to want to take the upper hand? You know, you may not come off by saying, you know, who do you think you are? But you feel it, you know. Sometimes you have to say it. You know? You have to hold back. You got to look on your face. Oh, you know, I was, I was thinking this was uh, going to tell me how to be it. But I was, I was, um, in a, I was on the jury once. Mm -hmm. And um, the judge, of course, gives his directives. And um, you can only, you if you've been on, on a jury, you can only make a decision based on the guidelines that he's given you. Mm -hmm. When we went back into the, um, I was the only African-American in there. The uh, defendant was African-American. And um, the first thing they wanted to do was ask a question that I thought was not relevant to what the judge's directions were. Mm -hmm. And I reminded them, they listen, they said, what is it? They kind of did what you did. I said, that's not what the judge asked. I said, the judge asked us, and I restated what he said. Mm -hmm. And finally, they argued, and I, I said, we need the bailiff. We need to go back out. And um, we went back out, and the judge, I said, we need to hear your directions again. Mm -hmm. I told the bailiff. And he said, so the judge came back. And when we kept, came back in, they said, I said, I said, like, basically, okay. It was what I thought it was, and they said, "Will you be the foreman?" And at the end of the uh, trial, uh, the the gentleman was a um, he had been working and he got injured. The guy had hit him in the back. Mm -hmm. and they wanted to know what's he insured. I told them that's not what the judge asked. Mm -hmm. And it was okay. We yeah. Got it this time. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the trial, they said, uh, at the end of the time, we assigned. Uh, a con they, um, monetary compensation for mm -hmm. him. And I could tell that there was this one woman who was looking like I don't really agree. And so I said, we're going to poll the jury. <coughs> I was watching up Perry Mason. I, <laughs> I said, how say you? How say you? I finally got to this lady. She goes, well, I said, if you're not ready, we can sit here until 7 or 8 tonight. Because we're going we're gonna to rule. She said, well, I, guess, I said, you can't guess. Well, you took control. No kidding. So she said, well, then, I agree. I said, everybody listen to my show. <laughs> <laughs> I said, and so when we got out, this is amazing. The judge looked at me and he smiled and he said, Manifold, can we poll the jury? Mm. They polled, he polled them himself. Mm -hmm. And I looked at her, I said, Because everyone had heard her yeah. and, I, and knew that she had already said. Yeah. And um, it, was, yeah. it was interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's good to know what you know and stand behind But I, I, I mentioned it because I, initially, I didn't tell them I was a social studies teacher and that I had, a, you know, I, I knew, I taught civics, I knew that stuff. Yeah. And I just let it roll out. And when it did, it was, I thought it was amusing. I was smiling on the inside because they said, <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Now, when you look at uh, Jude's approach to this thing, mm -hmm. becoming a, 
<coughs> identifying himself as a servant, as being contented. Uh, can you think of any other situations in the Bible where they went the other way? How about Cain and Abel? In, in a situation where there's a brotherly oh, yeah. relationship and one chose I mean, you know, and, and it's interesting how the, how the word give it to us, right? Just in case you're all so perfect and you're not able to admit the fact, here are some that went the other way. Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau. David and Absalom. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Joseph and his brothers. So, so he, it, it seems like human nature is and in the society in which we live today, suggests that you take the top. You know, everybody that we see on, in, in the most effective tool of brainwashing ever created, media, <laughs> you hardly, hardly ever see anybody being humble to where they're uh, not trying to buy to get the spotlight. Sometimes families and siblings, certainly not mm -hmm. among this group, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. families and siblings in that same type of robbery they go mm -hmm. on. That's right. That's right. Or, or you, you, you can even maybe envision yourself creating it in your own group, you know, in your own home by yeah. watching others have, have one favorite child versus another. <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, and I know sometimes it's hard because of personalities of, of kids, and my grands are the same way. And so I struggle with making sure that I don't give any impression that one is yes. favored over another, you yes. know. Probably they are. Yeah. Well, well, we, yeah. well, you know. It, it, sometimes they tell you. It works out that way. Yeah. But, they, but they, you know, it, it, it all depends. My kids, too, they said, you're favored today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's right. You're favored. You're favored. I think we have a, and that's just, my view, but I think we have a real balanced view mm -hmm. of, of who they are. But they do, they pick on each other, they, yeah. they'll make them, they'll nominate somebody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know, from a parental perspective, it's not necessarily that parents, I or parents are picking a favorite. There are some independent children that you have, mm -hmm. and there are some dependent children. And we as parents seem to protect our kids. Mm -hmm. So he, she who shows that dependent mm -hmm. side, we seem to, if, if you're from the outside and you're looking in, mm -hmm. it looked like you were favoring this mm -hmm. dependent child, which I don't really believe that. I believe that you just given each child what they need. Yeah. 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 Well, so, you know, sometimes maybe somebody may be favoring, but a lot of times I think that's. We know the kids are right. giving yeah. each child what, what they you need. think they yes. may need yes. because you don't necessarily understand or even know what the child actually yeah. needs. Yeah. That child may want you to respond certainly differently. Yeah. You know, it's kind of easy to be a, 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 a have a crutch That's right. and lean on that crutch. Yeah. So you have to spend that time building that relationship to understand. Yeah, and and, and building on that mm -hmm. as it relates to you. He's saying, we're all brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because I'm connected this way, I'm just like you. Yes. <laughs> In fact, I'm even, I may be lower than yes. you. Yes. This, this is his int introduction. Mm -hmm. he, he's, he's letting them know and setting them up to receive what it is he's got to say to them. Right? Amen. Amen. And, and he's doing that for, for a very good reason, because he knows the enemy is in the camp. Mm -hmm. Somebody read 1B and he'll begin to say who he's talking to. To those who have been called, who are loved by God, the Father, and kept by Jesus Christ. Now, he put everybody in that, in that camp, didn't he? <laughs> Well, no, no. Yeah, put everybody no. in no. uh, <laughs> There's a to those who are called. Oh, okay. So yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which means that you are elected by God. Yeah. 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 Through salvation. That's right. 
That's right. That's right. That's right. But doesn't That's right. God love us all? Yes, He does. It doesn't mean that you're kept by God. In other words, that you embrace uh, that love that He has provided and given to you through salvation, but that He does love everyone. So now you're in this pot. Mm -hmm. But then, are you one of the ones that has uh, brought God into your heart? Yeah, I am saying it. Yeah. Are you saying it? Yeah. 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 And, and, and that's why he says the calls are calling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't say the ones who telephoned <laughs> or made it. He said the ones that are called. Yes. And I think what I was doing in my mind is separating, giving everybody an opportunity because you're loved by God. Yeah. Now, you have will. You have to build that relationship, right. which goes to part B, if you will, right. which right. is the uh, kept by him. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what Peter was telling him, right? He was, Peter was telling him, look, this is going to happen. And while you are in the middle of this happening, well, what is it you need to do? You need to remember what was originally taught to you. Because the word hasn't changed. Remember Peter kept saying that? Yeah. You got to go back to the beginning because the word hasn't changed. And so Jude is now talking to that group. He's saying those that are called, those that have been, if you've been called, then you're not only sanctified, but you are what? Set apart. Set apart. Set apart. Set apart and you Preserved. Also, yeah, you also uh, O-S-A-S. <laughs> once saved, I want to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been working on uh, the <laughs> Twitter comments. Way too much. You're going to write that down. You're going to write that down. What is it? Once saved, always saved. That's yeah. what that's the preserve. O-S-A-S. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Once saved, yeah. yeah. always saved. That's what that's the preserve. Yes. 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 Get that. <laughs> that's, that, that's that reserve side. I was and starting to think ISIS and. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that, that's where it was set apart. Yeah. Uh, and we're secure in Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and, and so he, he's making them feel as one. You know. Uh, because if the enemy is, is reading this as well, and I'm sure they did. They won't get it. Mm -hmm. Because as Peter pointed out to us, their agenda is totally different. Their agenda is focused on what can I get out of by manipulating and using those who are true believers. Jude is reminding them, look, you know, you, you've been set apart. You, mm -hmm. yes. You've been uh, sanctified and preserved. You've been watched by God and guarded. Because if you're still standing for him, you know, he's got his hands up. That's right. Anybody got, his, got God's hands up? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, so <laughs> You know, I think about how I stumbled through life. I only could have gotten here. Yes. <laughs> By him having his hands on me. Mm -hmm. And so, so Jude is referring to which people in the crowd? See. Hmm. And, 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 and those that have executed something, right? I mean, they, they've gotten an invitation from God to be a part of his family, and they've accepted it, haven't they? Mm -hmm. Do you think we accept our relationship with God lightly today? I don't mean the person, but people in general. Yes. Do you think we accept mm -hmm. it? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. I don't think we fully understand what we commit to. Mm. Mm. Amen. 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 I'm going with that. That's right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. That's right. I, I just, um, I, mean, I just think, I mean, I, I was blessed to get saved at an early age. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, as I've learned over the years, you know, this walk is a, it says that you're going to suffer in this walk. Yeah, yeah. I've never signed up for suffering. No one. No one. So I mean, I, I think it, I think we have a uh, initially we have a general sense of, um, of 
God's grace, His mercy. Yeah. And, and maybe that's what, what draws us, mm -hmm. draws us in. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't think we fully understand. That's, that's right. That's initially. Right. Yeah, that's good. That's well, real good. Yeah, that's real good. And, and, and you know, I, I was sitting here when you asked the question, do we take God lightly? And I was fighting to answer that question. Um, because I think, to some degree, we do take God lightly. Even we who say that we are, are saved and so forth. And I come from that perspective from here. If we aren't taking God lightly, then we should be Jew. Mm -hmm. We should be fully into doing the right thing. We should truly have our entire life committed to Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's something that I can do to help build the kingdom, I shouldn't have a, there shouldn't be a question. Mm -hmm. I should jump in with head, feet, arms, and arms. We don't always do that. Yeah. And it's kind of like, wait a minute, hold on. Uh, I, 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 I need to go over there. Uh, right. So I, I think, I'm going to speak for Harvey. Everybody else speak for themselves. I, I'm work, that's a goal I'm working on, yeah, yeah. is to be fully uh, into Christ. That's good. Where there's, there's no question about how I'm walking, when I'm walking, where I'm walking. Mm -hmm. I know 100% of the time. Well, 99% of the time, because otherwise I'm dead. <laughs> but 99% I'm on the journey yeah. To, yeah. To, to get there. Sure. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's what that's what we're all hoping to be committed to. I think um, I'd like to comment that we don't, sometimes we don't always understand the commitment. Yes. I think we get committed to a church okay. and not to Christ sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'll do everything. I mean, I'll, this time, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. But why are you doing it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it really your gift? Mm -hmm. um, or are you called to go and sit with someone who's sick today? Mm -hmm. Outside of what Antioch or any, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and I use it like But uh, is everything that you do under a heading of some ministry in the church, or are you in, engaged in doing the will of God? Yeah, because he spoke uh, to you. Because he spoke to you. Mm -hmm. Do you visit the sick? Do you feed the homeless? Mm -hmm. Do you, you know, do that on your own yeah. without it being under the umbrella? That's right. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. often I think about people who are busy, busy, busy in the church, but yeah. outside of that, are you making any kind of a difference in the lives of people? Mm -hmm. um, and it's, a, it's for me that's a big part of what Christ means to me mm -hmm. is doing outside yes. of what. Yes. I, I'm busy outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and to go along with you, Zelda, is a part of what I was saying, is mm -hmm. the fact, what's your motive for what you're doing? Is your motive literally to build the kingdom? If you aren't working on building the kingdom, mm -hmm. all that other stuff that's out here is really in vain. So it, it's the case that the focus literally needs to be building the kingdom. Yeah. And God teaches us that building the kingdom can be manifested in so many different ways. You're talking about relationships, mm -hmm. you know, in your home, uh, throughout the everyday, your uh, interaction with people, along with all the other good examples that have just been given. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and perhaps, you know, as you were pointing out, that we don't really understand it. it Maybe the fact that we overlook this one word that we were chosen. Yes. Amen. Yes. We had nothing to do with yes. this. And, and, yes. and if you can if you can internalize the fact that God of all the people in the world chose you. Mm. <laughs> and I'm told that he made that choice before you were even formed yes. in your mother's womb. Yes. That's a big deal. Yes. And, 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 and if we are able to, to really grab that and hold on to it, and as Harvey said, you can't do it 100% of the time because we, we're still striving for perfection, that ought to be enough to keep us on the straight and narrow. Mm -hmm. that, that when we are faced with a, 
a decision that's going to be contrary to what we know is God's will in anything that we do. And we talked about this before. We have at least a, a millisecond where there's a thought in your mind that, you know, I really shouldn't do <laughs> something, something wrong. With that that we, we turn away. Because it, it's a uh, it's a finely crafted honor for us to be identified as being one of the chosen. And that's what you were pointing out to. You, you know, this is something that God has put in place in you. And even though the enemy is in the camp, You've got to pick up the arms and stand strong and defend and be prepared to go into battle. I mean, you agree that we're in a spiritual war right now. I mean, as long as we live, we're going to be in this struggle. And Jude is pointing out that uh, you, you've got to take up arms. Somebody read verse 2. May mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Hmm. Now, he, in, in, in that area, he, he's kind of returning to himself, right? He, he's returning to what his name means. <laughs> Just in the first part of his, his notice, he's covered his entire person, hasn't he? Because this is a praise, isn't it? In, in, in fact, he's asking for a threefold blessing. Uh, can you have mercy without grace? No. No. Do we need mercy today? Oh, yeah. <laughs> say we can't have mercy without grace. Right? Why is that? One writer, anybody got that? One writer said, you know, you got to have grace because grace removes the guilt. Grace removes the guilt. Whereas mercy removes the misery. <laughs> Think about it. Isn't that right? It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. Removes the removes the misery. That, that's the thing that stays with you. I mean, we didn't have His grace and His mercy. Where would we be? Huh? Completely. One quarter read said, God must pardon before he can heal. You know, because if he didn't forgive us, uh, we're still separated from him, aren't we? Another quote says, men must be justified before they can be sanctified. All this stuff I preach, so y'all are going to hear it again sometime. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be justified. And how did he, how, how were we justified? Look at the cross. Get the cross. That had to happen before we could be where we are today in a relationship with God, don't you think? John 3.16 said it. God so loved the world that he gave the only begotten son that the world through him can be saved. And what, what comes out of that, that situation? The third part of, uh, of Jude's uh, threefold blessing. Uh, peace. Peace, which comes from love. can't get to peace without those other things <laughs> happening. Yeah. You ever had turmoil and you know, anger and all that in your life and try to get peace? Mm -hmm. There's, there's no, no, no way, is it? 
and says uh, that peace floods the soul when Christ rules the heart. Peace floods, overflow, smothers the soul when Christ is in the heart. That's, that's, that's uh, Jude has given them all that in the first two verses. <laughs> so, so why are you uh, even concerned about what's happening around you? We need to be concerned because those who are searching. And those who are among us who, who are weak can be led astray. So, so, so it's kind of giving us an extra obligation. Jude could have continued on with his relationship and, and been okay. But we are obligated to be concerned about those that are around us who, who are displaying attitudes and, and actions of, of weakness as opposed to pointing a finger and and sort of just watching from the sideline as they destroy themselves. Judas said, no, we, we gotta we gotta raise up the bloodstained banner. He said that, the author said that if you are um, you don't have that then you're at war with God. The unsaved is at war with God. Yeah, yeah. And that's a problem. <laughs> that, that's a big problem. Because that put, you know, you may not lose your sanctification, but you won't be on the front row. You know? And and uh, and we serve a God who is, uh, you know, will chastise us. Yes. Uh, I can remember a period in my life I had to be whipped back in the shit. <laughs> You, you know, because some lessons require a little, a little more intense love to get you back on the straight and narrow. I know y'all have been doing it. <laughs> well, you know, the author talked about well, he says God in His mercy does not give us what we deserve, and I didn't understand that at first, but yeah, yeah. He gave all of that to His Son, yeah. who suffered for yes. us by yes. being nailed to the cross. And it didn't make sense at first, but it's very clear now. Yeah, yeah. yeah if we got what we deserved, we'd, we'd all be in big <laughs> trouble. Thank you, Donna. Yeah. And, and that's the hard thing for the unsaved to, to grasp. They, you know, they don't, if you've ever talked to someone who, who is uh, so indoctrinated with many different kinds of religions that they've lost the ability to understand that God is that kind of a forgiving God and that kind of a loving God you know, a lot of them that I've spoken to they'll, they'll initially they'll immediately go to well why does God allow all this destruction and, you know, God has nothing to do with that <laughs> you know if, if you move and locate your house along the seashore you've got to expect problems with the ocean at some point. <laughs> and when it comes, you can't go hang down for that. <laughs> so in other words, you said we have free will. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and, and, and just think of the magic of that in, in the relationship with God where he, did, he allows us the ability to, to make a hard choice. And you know what? Uh, depends on where you come from scripturally. Mm -hmm. From the beginning, God gave us a choice. Mm -hmm. Because he put Adam and Eve in the garden. And he told them what tree not to touch. Mm -hmm. But what did they do? They disobeyed. Yeah. So yeah. they were already in a situation where they had to make a choice. Yeah. Just as we have a opportunity to make a choice today. So it hasn't ever stopped. Yeah. Um, we still have a free will. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this fits in here, but mm -hmm. you know, as I was reading, um, I think it's, it's 
between pages 158 and 159, and it talked about the elect and so forth. And it says that there are some things we're only going to understand when we face God. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes when people ask me why things happen, like, I find it hard and as a human being to understand why the plane went down. All of those people, I think there were 46 Christians aboard going forth from the same church. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't understand, I don't know. Mm -hmm. God is sovereign, I don't understand it. I, I don't try to explain. Yeah. yeah. Because I don't understand. I hurt. Mm -hmm. I, I'm in pain. Just I mean I'm pained by what's going on. I don't think we have to have an answer. Yeah. I think we you my mom and dad see you'll understand it better by and by. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. when by and by wherever by and by is. But, yeah. uh, but I'm just saying I think sometimes we have to conclude that we don't know. Yeah. And we can only sit and empathize with you, we can cry with you, we I don't understand. Yeah. I don't, um, we're involved with the little, uh, my daughter's involved with smashing walnuts, brain cancer among kids, I don't understand. But I can sit with the parent, I can send the contribution, yeah. but I can't, I can't give you a, 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 a you know, I just can't go there, I just say, I don't understand it. Yeah. Yeah. I know God is sovereign, and oh, I yeah. love that that. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's given unto man who wants to die. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think then, sometimes I get beside myself a little when everything is tried to be explained. I can't. Yeah, no, you can't. Yeah, you really can't. There's no answer for that. There's no answer for that one. Except, you know, I, I'm here for you. I'll do what I can. And that's about as far as uh, you can take it. That's no, just me. That's mm -hmm. my thought sometimes because I'm overwhelmed. I, too. I watch TV, I listen, I read the paper. I'm overwhelmed too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I got you. Well, but, but you know, the anchor we have is, is as Jude is pointing out, that uh, that God has selected us, and mm -hmm. those of us who are anchored in Him mm -hmm. uh, understand the transition from birth to death. Mm -hmm. And that uh, we know that. There are some circumstances in life that put us in situations where uh, we meet death and it's unexplained. Yes. Or we meet death and when you look at the dynamics of what got you there, it could have been avoided. My, right now, my hope is that I will live long enough to find, to see what happens with the little seven-year-old girl who, that angel, an angel of, yeah. of mercy, led her out. Yeah. Well, the airplane crash with her yeah. parents, yeah. and I that's think she, she has yeah. a story to tell. Yeah. But then on the flip side, so why her other? You know, yeah. I'm just saying, yeah. humanity yeah. says that. Mm -hmm. But she, I, if I, I would love to read her story. <laughs> so would I. And, yeah. and see, you know, yeah, does she feel age? When, you, I, you've got to have a presence there. Yeah. So there's a, out of all of that, something good comes out. Right. But to explain to you why her and not the other, I can't. Yeah, yeah, no, that, you're absolutely right. And the little girl in the Middle East who was shot so brutally, who has now come forward. Malala? Yeah. Oh, my God. To tell her story. Yeah. Yeah, I think the reality is we live in an imperfect world. I think the creation that was created was, 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 was perfect. Mm -hmm. But I think the moment that sin entered the world, in a perfect world. Yeah. And so this is kind of the, you know, um, this is what we get as a result. Yeah, we get yeah. things that, that That's right. we just don't, doesn't, we don't understand it, doesn't make yeah. sense to us because we know that this is not what God created, that was not his intention. For That's, right. That's right. But again, we've interjected ourselves, our own free will into it. And this is the product of what we're getting. That's right. And, and that's what Jude is dealing with here with regards to the people that are reading his letter uh, who, who do not realize that there are false teachers among them mm -hmm. who are casting into their mind ideas and thoughts that cause them to want to question the activities of God. Jude is saying, look, chill out. <laughs> You are chosen. 
God has sanctified and protected you. Yes. Yes. That's all you need to be focused on. Yes. Because man has an ever searching mind that wants to get the answers that only God can offer or has. And that'll never happen. And and so uh, we, we should, in the case of Jude, he's saying we should just be focused on what do we need to do to defend the gospel and, and, and contend with it whenever we have an opportunity where it's challenged, meet it head on because you need to pick up the arms and fight. And, uh, and it looks like uh, we're not going to be able to get to verse number three. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you know it's, it's a perfect way to step into identifying who the enemy is and Jude does it by saying and reminding the people that he's now about to hit them with bad information with information that's going to trouble them by letting them know up front you are beloved right? and, and, and that's, that's kind of what God is saying to us in every situation where we find ourselves uneasy or unable to, to find a place of comfort in and of ourselves is give it to me. Because you are beloved. That's a, that's a strong word. Yeah. To me, beloved means deeper than just loving somebody. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's a challenge for us to, to sort of just let things go and depend on that. But, and, and you're right, I mean, if, we, if you pay attention to the news, it drive you crazy. <laughs> you know, every, every minute, and, and they wear you out because they repeat it a thousand times a cycle. Yes. Yes. Wear you out. You and, know, I, I, I liked the response terms of recognize I don't know yes don't even try to go there yeah. uh, and to be reminded that man has become so sophisticated God gave him a, a small part of the brain to use because it's a small part mm -hmm. but they have used that small part to think that they know everything <laughs> and it's like don't forget scripture scripture says our thoughts and ways are not God starts away. So man used his or her logic to say this should have happened, that should have happened. We don't know. We don't know. And and we have to and we have to live. We have to live with that that reality. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If God wanted us to know, I guarantee you. Yeah. <laughs> we you do know allow the Holy Spirit. But you, you do know that He is in control. Right. And the same reason why the plane went down and 45 yeah. people died is probably the same reason that the little girl walked away from, from a plane. You know, the good Lord is in control mm -hmm. of it all. Mm -hmm. And everything works to his good and his will. So, mm -hmm. As long as we believe in that and the promises that are in the book, then we can be warriors. Yeah. And that's what Judas. is. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what he's pointing to. And, and there'll be some who agree, there'll be some that, you know, that we love. because we're human. Yes. And as you said, we're, we may be 99%, we're not 100 yet. That's right. But then you move on to tomorrow by knowing that I'm beloved. Yes. You know. Yes. And everybody has a chance to be just like me. Because yes. that's, that's part of his plan. He shut nobody out. And Obviously, the Apostle Paul and many others, David, all demonstrated to us that you can go far wrong and still end up right. Amen. Amen. Not too far right. Not too far right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you, know, you, notice, you notice I reversed it. I went left saying I'm going right. That's right. Praise the Lord. Okay. <laughs> So did I miss anything in verses 1 and 2 that we, we should cover? No? All right. All minds clear? Yes. All right. Okay. Let's gather in the pack.